Cool. Thanks for coming along. This is IELTS Reading Super Skills by E2 Language. My name is Jay. I'm one of the expert teachers. Why am I an expert teacher? What makes me an expert? Well, I've taken the IELTS actually, and I got a nine in IELTS reading. I've also got a background in linguistics and languages, and so have the other teachers here at E2 Language. We sort of, we like to think that we stand out from the crowd a little bit. Let's do a warm up. One of, the, th one of the, the key things about IELTS reading is your ability to identify synonyms because in the question prompt and in the passage, we use different words. They, wo they won't use the exact same words. They'll use synonyms. So let's warm up. I want you to find the synonyms in this passage here. Just as a hint, number one will be at the top of the passage, number 13 will be at the bottom of the passage. It will follow a sequence. Do it quickly, do it quickly. I don't care if you make a mistake. I want you to move quickly, not too carefully. Faster, faster, faster. Good, Suresh, well done. Good, Ados. Good, Donata. Thirty seconds left. You need to move fast. Thirty seconds starting now. Good, Abane. Well done. That's a good one. Reciprocate. Okie dokie, let's have a look at the answers here. All right, as I said, IELTS reading is all about synonyms. Here you can imagine that you're going to get your question and here is the passage. Now the question will mention something about tops. Then in the passage, it's going to not mention the same word. It's going to have a synonym. Same rainforest, it'll have a synonym. Obtain, it'll have a synonym. 
find the answer to. Here's the question, for example. It will have a synonym in the passage. Your ability to look at the question, identify a keyword, and find the synonym in the passage is basically the key to IELTS reading. Let's look at the answers. So tops, higher reach of. Rainforests, tropical, whoop, let me disappear. Rainforests, tropical forests, obtain, come by. Find the answer to, solve. Intimate, close. So you can imagine that in the question, it says something about the intimate relationship. And here it says relationships that involve close, intimate, close. These are synonyms. Give, provide. In the question, it will say something like, what do the plants give to the ants? And here it says the plants provide blah, blah, blah. Stock, supply. Reciprocate, return the favor. That's a difficult one. But that's what reciprocity means. To reciprocate means to return the favor. So in the question, I might say something about um, the ants reciprocating. And in the text, in the passage, it will say the ants return the favor. Plant food, fertilizer. Ant poo, fecal matter. Disintegrate, break down. Here we have a verb. Here we have a phrasal verb, two-part phrasal verb. Understandings, insights. And here's a bit of a trick. 13 is biotic adaptation. And here's biotic adaptation. You should remember that sometimes you cannot have a synonym. Some words, there are no synonyms. For example, evolution. There are, there are no synonyms for evolution or biotic adaptation, for example. So sometimes in the question, the same identical word will be used in the passage, but 99% of the time will be a synonym. Let's continue with this synonym practice before we do our mock test. I want you to find the synonym for jump. I'm going to show you a whole paragraph. I'm only going to give you, I don't know, 20 seconds to find the synonym for jump. Your time starts now. Jump. Did you find it? Good, I'll be at Malene Adris. Well done. 10 seconds left. Three, two, one, stop. Cool. So what's the synonym for jump? What about leap? Leap and jump. So the question says jump. You quickly scan your eyes over the text and you see the word leap. It's a synonym. You know that you must read in this section here. Let's do it again. Find the synonym for run away from, run away from. In 20 seconds, your time starts now. Ten seconds. And stop. That's 20 seconds. Cool. So we're looking for a synonym for the phrase run away from. And we look here, we go fish, no, looking at the, the, the main words and we're scanning our eyes and we, whoa, what's this one? Escape. Run away from. Escape. Synonyms. Find the synonym for the word hostile, hostile, starting now, hostile. Good, Adris, not quite, Adris. Good, Adris, that's better. Good, Joe Marie. Hostile. I'll give you a bit more time for this one. Hostile.
Cool. All right. Stop there. Let's. So we're looking for the word hostile. 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 Hmm. What's this enemy filled? Enemy filled. Maybe the question says something about a hostile environment. For example, a hostile environment. That's a collocation. Or an enemy filled. Hostile. Enemy filled. They are synonyms. Cool. Let's do another warm up skill before we do our mock test. I want you to scan, read the paragraph to find the main idea fast. What I mean by this is I'm going to show you a paragraph. I want you to quickly read it, quickly read it. Then I'm going to give you four answer options that contains what the main idea of the paragraph is and you have to choose the best one. So quickly scan read. What does scan read mean? Well, does it read, does it mean that you read carefully every word because you want to absorb all the information and all the details? No. There's not enough time in IELTS to read carefully and deeply. It's not a relaxing Sunday afternoon. What you have to do is scan read. That means that you just quickly scan your eyes over looking at all the key words like nouns, verbs, and adjectives, ignoring the grammary words to pick out the main idea. I want you to scan read this paragraph in 30 seconds starting now. Twenty seconds left. Cool. Okay, let's just quickly look at this. It says male domestic fowl. Hmm. It's a, it's a type of chicken. It's not a chicken. Though. I believe it's called a rooster. A rooster, a rooster, male, male fowl. Cool. Now I want you to read these answer options and I want you to find which answer option best summarizes this paragraph. You have 30 seconds starting now. Okay. Hmm. I see a lot of people writing C. I'm not quite sure. Let me read this. Male domesticated fowl or roosters are less aggressive towards related males than to unrelated males when competing for females. This suggests that domestic fowl can recognize the kin among individuals in a group and that their behavior is different towards kin and non-kin. Now, what's the main idea of this paragraph? Hens behave strangely around roosters? No. Roosters are nicer to their relatives? Hmm, possibly they're less aggressive towards related males. And here it says their behavior is different towards kin and non-kin. That's possible. C, roosters compete for females. Well, they're doing this when they compete for females. So that's not the main idea of the paragraph. That's a, a little part of it, but the main part is that they're less aggressive towards related males. Chickens are usually unaggressive. Incorrect. The answer is B. Roosters are nicer to their relatives. So if we were to summarize this into a single sentence, it would be B. Let's try it again. I want you to scan, read the paragraph to find the main idea fast. Read it again. Okay. Now, 
Is it A, B, C, or D? If we summarize this, if we boil this down into a single sentence, which answer option best captures the main idea? Cool. Let's have a look at the answer. Let me read the paragraph. It says, it's long been associated with anger and coarseness, but profanity or, or swearing can have another more positive connotation. Psychologists have learned that people who frequently curse are more honest. Now we've got some synonyms, swear, curse, swearing, cursing, swearing, cursing. Okay, fine. People who swear are less likely to curse. Okay, people who frequently curse are more honest. Hmm, they say the same thing, but in different words. That's a good thing. Swearing can have positive effects. Well, not really. It doesn't say that. Psychologists believe swearing can have positive mental effects. Yeah, not really. People who swear are usually angrier. Definitely not. The best summary of this paragraph is A, people who swear are less likely to lie. People who frequently curse are more honest. These two things say the same things, but the same thing, but in different words. A lot of IELTS in finding the right answer is when the question and the passage say the same thing, but in different words. That's a lot of IELTS reading. Right, so we're going to do an IELTS reading mock test, but we're going to do it a little bit differently. I'm going to give you two tests. Okay, the first I'm going to show you a question type. And the first question type I show you will be dead simple. It'll be so simple that you'll just go, that's it, B or A or C, right? And the idea is that I want you to understand the question type because I think the hardest thing in IELTS reading is not understanding the passage, but understanding the format of the question because some of them are truly confusing and if you can understand the question type and you know what it's asking you then you can concentrate more on understanding the passage so we're going to do a dead simple one so you can get the concept of the question then we're going to do a more complex one all that will change will be the content of the passage in the question i want you to understand the format before we do that i want you to write down on a piece of paper one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This will be your answer sheet. And when we do the IELTS, the, the mock test, the real one, the hard one, I want you to write your answer beside the number on your answer sheet. So please copy this down. Just write the numbers one to nine in a vertical, vertical line, please. I'll just give you 10 seconds to do that. Then we'll start. Okie dokie. Now, with the simple ones, don't write it on your answer sheet. It's just practice, okay? All right, so we're gonna do, first of all, multiple choice, simple. Multiple choice, simple. This is what it looks like on test day. This is what the question looks like, and it can be confusing. So this is question, question one and two. It says, choose the appropriate answer, A, B, C, or D. A, B, C, or D. Write your answer for questions one to two on your answer sheet. Uh, don't write it on your answer sheet. This is just a practice. What color is Jay's car? From whom did Jay purchase his car? Let me disappear. Answer these two questions, please.
Good. So Deepak, the answer will be not the words, but the letters, remember? It says here, choose the appropriate A, B, C, or D. So we're writing the letter, not the word. Good. Let's have a look. This is dead simple. Dead simple. What color is Jay's car? It's red. C, one C. Jay has a red car. From whom, from who or whom did Jay purchase his car? Rattle, smoke, Jay or Tim? The answer is D, Tim. He bought his car off his uncle, Tim. So if you had C and D, well done. Let's apply that understanding to a multiple choice, but a real one with difficult, difficult reading. Now, I'll give you a few minutes to answer this one. And write this one on your answer sheet. Shiva, check your number two. Nizar, check your number two. Fan Chunchen, check your number two. Abid, check your number two. Good, 30 seconds left. Ten seconds. Okie dokie, right. Let's have a look at the answers here. Let me disappear. I'm gonna quickly read the paragraph. When in, look, to be honest, when I did my IELTS, I didn't actually read the passages from beginning to end. There's not enough time. I just went to the question, looked at the question, went back to the passage, quickly sped uh, scan, read the passage to find the corresponding keyword, read for it, got the answer, moved on to the next one. There's not enough time to begin and lazily read through the passage, then go back to the questions. Start with the question, move to the passage, move through as you go. Nevertheless, I'm going to read this just for you. When people are listening to music, their emotional reactions to the music are reflected in changes in their pupil size. Both the emotional content of the music and the listener's personal involvement with music influence pupil dilation. Researchers are using pupil size measurement to probe listeners' reactions to music. That's all we need to know. So pupil size naturally adjusts to the volume of the music. Does it mention volume here? No. The beat of the music? Does it mention the beat? No. The emotion conveyed by the music? Hmm. When people are listening to music, uh, the emotional content of the music influences pupil dilation. So we've got C, says it here. 
pupil size naturally adjusts to the emotion conveyed by the music. The emotional content of the music influences pupil dilation. Fine, what about two? Why are pupil sizes being measured? Well, it says here, researchers are using pupil size measurement, there's your keyword, corresponding statement in the paragraph, to pro listeners reactions to music. To improve musical reactions? No. To gauge reactions to music? Hmm, sounds good. To modulate thoughts? No. To solve complex problems? No. The answer is here. Why are pupil sizes being measured by the researchers? Well, researchers are using pupil size measurement to probe listeners' reactions to music, to gauge probe reactions to music. These two say the same thing, but in different words. Cool, so if you had uh, C and B, please write that on your answer sheet. Number one, C, number two, B. We'll move on to true, false, and not given. Simple, we're gonna do a dead simple first, so you understand the concept. Okay, right, what you need to do is basically, you look at the statement, it says, Jay owns a green car. You look at the text, it says Jay has a red car. Is this true? Does it agree? Is it false? Does it contradict or say something completely different or not given? Is there no information about the color of my car? I want you to go through and answer these questions very quickly. You have one minute. Adris, check your number three, please. Ten seconds. Good, all right, well done, that's one minute. Right, let's look at the answers. Okay, so Jay owns a green car. Is this true, false, or not given? Let's read the text. It says Jay has a red car. So this is false. This says Jay has a red car. This says Jay owns a green car. They are contradictory. They say the opposite, not the opposite. They say contradictory things, okay? This is not true. My car is red, not green, so it's false. What about Jay's car is old? Okay, let's keep reading. Jay has a red car. He bought it, he bought his car off his uncle Tim for $400, so it's cheap. Is it old? Well, we don't know. It rattles and it smokes. Okay, so it's, it doesn't, it's broken down. It's not a good quality car, but is it old? Well, I don't know, it depends. It doesn't say. It rattles and it smokes, but it still works. So it's reliable, but is it old? It does not say in this text, if my car is old. There is no way to know. I cannot know from this text. All I know is that my car is red, it's cheap, 400 bucks, and it's got some mechanical problems. It could be new, it could be red. I bought it from Tim because he's really rich, and he said, just give me $400. I'm assuming something, if I assume something, I can't assume anything, this is not given. It's not given, it does not say in the text, if my car is old and I cannot assume anything, therefore I must write not given. So the answer to question four is not given. What about question five? Joan, Jay owns a red car. Well, yes, Jay owns a red car. Jay has a red car, he bought it off his uncle. Yes, this is true. So false, not given and true, dead simple. Now we're going to apply true, false, not given to some real content. I'm gonna give you a few minutes to answer these questions.
That was not me texting on my phone. Thirty seconds left. Cool. All right. Let's look at the answers here. Let's quickly read the text. Is it a boy or is it a girl? For baby sea turtles, it's not that cut and dry. Because they, the baby sea turtles, don't have an X or Y chromosome, baby sea turtles' sex is defined during development by the incubation environment. The nest's thermal environment determines whether an embryo will develop as a male or a female. Warmer sand temperatures produce more females and cooler sand temperatures produce more males. To make things even more complicated, in some species of sea turtles, their sexual anatomy is not physically apparent until about a decade or so when they approach sexual maturity. So, three, sea turtle sex is determined by chromosomal changes. They don't have an X or Y chromosome. It says here, their sex is defined during development by the incubation environment. This is contradictory. This is false. It, this statement contradicts or says something opposite or other than this statement here. What about this one? Fluctuating sand temperatures affect turtle lifespans. Hmm. Well, it says warmer sand temperatures produce more females and cooler sand temperatures produce more males. Okay. It doesn't say. Maybe, but we can't assume anything. We can't assume anything. Therefore, it's going to be not given. What about number five? Sea turtle sexual anatomy is only visible after approximately 10 years. Well, let's go back one. Okay, it's this last sentence here. To make things even more complicated, in some species of sea turtles, their sexual anatomy is not physically apparent. Sea turtle sexual anatomy is only visible, physically apparent, until about a decade or so, after approximately 10 years. This is true. Number five is true. So three is false, four is not given, and five is true. So on your answer sheet, you would write false, not given, and true for three, four, and five. Cool. How did you go? Just give me a smiley face in the chat if you got that one. Smiley face. Good. Nice. Good. Well spotted there, uh, Maria Amjad. I agree with you, actually. Good. Nice. You got it. Great work. Cool. Let's move on. Let's do this one here. This is also a complicated question type in IELTS because it has lots of parts. 
match sentence endings. Let's do a dead simple, super easy one, super easy, so we can get the idea. Right, this is what it looks like on test day, okay? You'll see something that looks like this. It says you need to complete each sentence with the correct ending A to C from the box below. Okay, here's the box below. Anyway, forget the instructions, they're too confusing. Let me explain it to you. Here is the first part of the sentence, Jay's Uncle Tim. Now you need to find the part of the sentence, well, Jay's Uncle Tim still runs. It's grammatically possible. Jay's Uncle Tim sold him the car for 400 bucks. Jay's Uncle Tim is red. All of these are possible, but only one will be correct according to the text. So is it going to be 6A, 6B, or 6C? Now do the rest of them. Ten seconds left. Cool. Let's have a look at this dead simple example. So Jay's Uncle Tim, he bought his car off his Uncle Tim for $400. Jay's Uncle Tim sold him the car for $400. Good. 6B. So you'd write B on your answer sheet. What about number seven? Though the car rattles, it still runs, is red. Hmm, it rattles and it smokes, but it still works. It still runs. Cool, 7A. Though the car rattles, it still runs. And eight, Jay's car is red. Jay has a red car. Cool, too easy. Let's try match sentence endings for real. I'll disappear and give you a few minutes to do this one here. Too easy, 30 seconds left. If you're watching on YouTube, please give a thumbs up for E2 language. Like this video. All right, let's have a look at the answers here. All right, so we know this text. We've read this passage now. Now we can really just start to use keywords. 
So increased sand temperatures. Now we remembered that the sand temperature bit was around here, okay? It says warmer sand temperatures produce more females. So increased sand, sand temperatures. So warmer sand temperatures produce more females. So we've got increased sand temperatures and we're looking for that other half produce more females, produce more, yield higher numbers of females. Interesting. So 6C, increased sand temperatures yield higher numbers of females, says the same thing as this sentence here, warmer sand temperatures produce more females. What about number seven? The sex of baby sea turtles hmm, is determined by the temperature of the nest. Are the result, while it can't be the sex are the result. It can't be this one grammatically. So 7b is impossible. The sex of baby sea turtles is reached after about 10 years. Well, no. So we're going to go with 7a. And it also says it here, the nest's thermal environment or heat or the temperature determines whether an embryo will develop as a male or female. The sex of baby sea turtles is determined by the temperature of the nest. This 7a says the same thing as this sentence here. A higher number of males hmm, is reached after about 10 years. No, a higher number, a higher number, a high number of males. Uh, this is actually grammatically wrong. This is my fault. It should be is the result, are the results. So it must be um, 8b, a, higher, a high number of males are the result of colder sand, cooler sand, Temperatures produce more males. A, B, uh, sorry, 8B says the same thing as this sentence here. Finally, the sexual maturity of turtles is reached after about 10 years, 9D. Sea turtles are a decade or so when they approach sexual maturity. Cool, well done, well done. So. These are the answers to the questions. And this is what your answer sheet will look like when you take the IELTS. So it was 1C, 2B, 3 false, 4 not given, 5 true, 6C, 7A, 8B, and 9D. What was your score out of 9? And just please type into the chat. 8 out of 9 for deep back. All correct for Binny. Joe Marie, nine, eight, nine, 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 eight, eight, nine, five. All incorrect for Daval. Nine, nine, six, six, seven, nine, eight. Kuladam, eight. Surika, An Anam got eight out of nine. Rahaf got nine. Ahmed got seven. Cool. Good stuff. Even if you got nine or eight or seven, or even if you got zero, you probably still need to practice. While I've got you here, I'm going to talk about why you should upgrade your E2 language package. Why should you do that? Why should you spend money on e2language.com? Hmm, there are a few important reasons why. First is that you, depending on your package, will receive a study plan where you can meet a teacher like me who has taken the IELTS before and we will talk to you about what you need to do to pass the test. Unlike all the other junk on YouTube, we have methods. Like what you saw tonight, we have methods for writing task one, writing task two, speaking, reading, all question types and listening. We give you methods, we simplify it, we build your skills. We also have quality practice materials. We give you feedback on your speaking and writing. We offer as part of your package, one-on-one -on -one tutorials with expert teachers live classes every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, as well as constant motivation. If you want to succeed on your IELTS test, then upgrading to e2language.com is a damn good idea. Cool. Uh, let's go to Q&A because we've got some interesting questions here. Shiva says, excellent class. I'm glad. Thank you, Shiva. Um, Deepak, question, do we always have all three options in the answer or is it possible there could be multiple true and f no false not given? Okay, good Deepak. So Deepak's asking in true false not given, 
let's say there are three true, false, not given. Will it always have one true, one false, and not one not given? No, they may be all true. They may all be false. They all may be not given, or it might be true, true, false, or it might be true, not given, not given. So you have to be prepared. It depends on the text. Abid, <laughs> it was much tougher in the actual IELTS test than this one, to be honest. Well, maybe you've just gotten better. Nizar, is that enough for me to go to the exam right now? Don't do that. Please don't take the exam without preparing properly because, well, <laughs> I see hundreds, hundreds of people at e2language.com who try the exam, try it again, try it again, and then by their third or fourth attempt, or in some cases 10, 12, 14, the highest number we've seen is 16 attempts before the person went to get some help and preparation. Don't do that. That is seriously thousands of dollars that you'll spend on taking the test when you could just prepare, improve your English, pass the test, and feel good about yourself. Um, Maria, I'm confused between choosing IELTS or PTE. I watched your video on practice and articles too. Okay, PTE or IELTS, which one? Well, PTE is more difficult for speaking and IELTS is more difficult for writing. So if you're a good writer and a bad speaker, do IELTS. If you're a good speaker and a bad writer, do PTE. That's the simple answer to that one. Cool, 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 cool. What else we got? Uh, we'll do next week, Anum, we'll do sentence completion. So please come back next Thursday for the next one. We'll do the other question type. Slowly, we'll work through them all. Item, do you have any other classes for speaking, writing, and listening to study IELTS? Yes. Yes, we've got it all. And we have some really cool, not cool, we have some really effective methods for speaking, for writing, and for listening. If you want to check out a video on YouTube, go to our channel and watch the latest IELTS speaking strategy video. It's very, very interesting. Uh, Samir, last exam I got seven, but I thought I had higher. <laughs> That's, I understand completely, Samir. I'm actually taking the IELTS academic again because I wanted to get a nine in everything, but I couldn't. I got all. I got a hundred percent in the PTE for everything. I took the IELTS and I did not get a hundred percent. I'm too embarrassed to tell you my score. I'll tell you next week whether I get a nine. Nizar, what part of the questions is the easiest to start with the exam? Multiple choice is the easiest. What's the most difficult question type? Probably true, false, not given. Shahana, match match things is also hard. Uh, we'll do, might, might do that next week, Shahana, so please come back. Ahmed, express package amount allows me to the live classes. Yes. Okay. So e2language.com has just launched an express package. So if you're worried about money, um, we do have a cheap one that does not have any tutorials or no study plan, but you do get access to all of the methods, all of the practice materials, and you can join the live classes. So that might be money well spent. Lucas, I'm a bit worried about my speed. Yes, scan reading and reading quickly is a real key for IELTS reading. Abid, I'm preparing for the PT this time. I got speaking eight. Da, 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 da. Okay, fine. Um, Donada, I have two months, but I don't feel confident. Register with E2, build your confidence, do this properly. Basil, hey, Jay, my exam is on the 5th of May. What plan can you suggest I take from each language? Well, you've got, whoa, what's, uh, you've got one month. So in fact, you could take any plan. So it just depends on how much help you want. Deepak, uh, we might do complete uh, sentence, sent what's it called? Sentence completion, sentence completion next week. Maria. Interesting. Maria says 50 in PTE speaking is the same as seven in IELTS speaking. Yeah, I would agree. It's about difficult. ADOS, is it possible to get at least eight or 7.5 with upper intermediate level? Oof. Nope. Truly, IELTS is 
I, the way IELTS marks writing is crazy. I have to say, I have to say the way they make mark writing is crazy, but the way that PTE marks speaking is also crazy. So there you go. Um, Rahaf, how much time I will take to study IELTS are very good. Well, depends on your current level of English. Sureka, my exam is on the 29th of April. What plan do I need to take? You should take the first or you could take the express, the first or the second, I think. Shiva, I'm preparing for IELTS general. Please guide me to do best. Yes, we have IELTS general as well. We have IELTS general and academic. Tafikul, I'm sitting before once for IELTS. It's not up to mark, so I need more improvement for my reading, writing, or speaking. Yes. E2 language, my man, E2 language. Uh, we'll do that one next week, Nizar. Mm, cool. What else we got? Lucas, what time is the class next week? Same time, Lucas. So it's 9 p.m. Melbourne time. Basil. Basil, please email hello at e 2 language or I totally recommend just going to the website right now and choosing a package and upgrading. If you change your mind, you can always go up in packages as well. Solomon, my examination is on the 13th of May. What package should I go for? That means you've got about six weeks. So you can in fact choose any of them, Solomon. It depends. If you're confident, choose a cheaper package. If you're not confident, choose the more expensive ones because it means you get more one-on-one -on -one tutorial help and feedback and everything you need. If you're unsure about the package, you can upgrade between packages. So you can start on the cheaper one and upgrade to the next, or you can email hello at e2language.com. Please check out e2language.com. Other than that, thanks very much for coming. I totally enjoyed this one. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned from it. IELTS can actually be made simple. There is a way to do it and to make it and to build your confidence. Please come again next week because I'll do this again and we'll do different question types with different skills. It's a pleasure teaching you. I'll see you soon. I'm going to just disappear.